Hello dear learners, welcome to e-learning platform. This week you are going to learn some new poems written by Ted Hughes. The selected poems are the Jaguar and Arthur and Pike. Me first learned with you throughout the whole lecture. Let's begin. Synopsis of the poem The Jaguar by Ted Hughes. The Jaguar was published in The Hawk in the Rain in 1957. Throughout the poem, Hodge Hughes uses figurative language and imagery to depict the differences between the Jaguar and the other creatures, even cats, that live in the zoo. The Jaguar attracts all manner of attention from the crowds at the zoo, far more than any of the other animals. This is all due to the power and freedom of spirit that the cat has maintained. The human visitors can sense this and are drawn to it. The Jaguar of Hughes is a powerful poem that describes a zoo, its sorrowful inhabitants, and the one creature that hasn't given into despair. Though he is in prison, he is still cheerful. Summary of the poem In the first two stanzas of the Jaguar, he is a speaker, describes a few of the many depressed animals that make up a zoo. They include parrots, shrieking for food, apes, and lethargic lions and tigers. He also makes sure within these lines to emphasize how unwild these animals are, suggesting that something more besides their freedom has been taken from them. In the middle of the poem, he brings in a young child visiting the zoo and uses him to draw the poem towards the jaguar, the centerpiece of the zoo. The cat appears to be, by the speaker's account, the big cat, the only animal that has a depressed representative of its species. Its power is in full display as the speaker alludes to the wildness that still resides within the cat's eyes and heart. Themes in the poem Jaguar In the Jaguar, he uses floors several interesting themes freedom resistance and act captivity all three of these are linked together in the form of the jaguar and his strength in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds the poet draws the reader's attention to the jaguar allowing them to marvel over the animal just as the spectators in the zoo do. But what the poet adds to the experience is something of the jaguar's own emotions. He is able to convey the creature's feelings as it stalks across the cage, as well as its potential. He continues to push back, at least emotionally, against his captivity. The jaguar has not had his spirit broken. Next poem, an author synopsis of the poem. Oh, you can look at you can look at a picture of the author. An author is a beautiful poem. Why the poet has given the story of an author. The creature in the ocean. Authors are animals that can live on both lands and in water. There are some qualities of authors that make them the prey of hunters. Analysis of the poem. The poet says that an author is neither a fish nor an animal. It is a combination of both. It has full legs and it still can be in the water. Its qualities are even better than that of a fish. All his feet are webbed and have long tail just like a rudder behind the boat. 
and his head is round like an old tomcat. And that is why they are also called sea cats. Due to such features, an author brings the legend of himself from the time way before wars or burials. So authors existed way before human beings. In spite of hounds and vermin holes, otters are still alive. Otters are not like badgers that eat roots as they are carnivores. The otter wanders, cries, and gallops along the land, which is no longer displaced, and again goes back to the water when it mills and mills the water itself. The poet has defined the otter by defining the qualities of various creatures. The otter neither belongs to land nor water, and it is seeking some world that was lost ever since it dived into the water. And he is still looking for his world, but he cannot completely return to the world. So he takes his changed body to the holes of lakes. It behaves as if it is blind and cleaves the water, passes through it, till it can leak the pebbles of the bottom of the water source. The author has the quality to cross seas within three nights, just like a king in hiding. Again, the poet is giving an example of its connection to mythology. The author cries to the old shape of its starlit and over the sunken farms where bears freely roam around. It keeps crying till the day arrives and the birds sing their songs and the cars start running on the road. In the poem, Tedeus tries to hint towards an understanding of the necessity of the war between vitality and death by placing the animal evidence that vitality has been sustained by death in the wider context of a universe that is creative destructive. In the poem, Tedeus tries to hint towards an understanding of the necessity of the war between vitality and death. By placing the animal evidence that vitality has been sustained by death in the wider context of a universe that is creative destructive. In the poem, the author symbolizes all the forces in nature that elude definition, the forces that are ambiguous and that must be understood by a man so as to reach the metaphysical reality of the existence of humans. Next poem, The Pike. Ted Hughes is known for his use of cynicism and brutality of animal life. Pike is no exception and depicts Pike as an animal born with the instinct to kill and destruct, though it looks like a fish, but it has a feature of an animal. He has allegorically used it to imply that every human has got such an asset, which is revealed when he wants to achieve something over the other. It also serves as a reminiscence of his childhood. The poem Pike is published in his second collection of poetry which exalted his reputation as a major poet of America. Synopsis of the poem Pike the Pike by Ted Hughes is divided into three parts. The first part deals with his admiration for the pike which comes at the beginning of the poem where the poet describes the size and color of the pike with his then due by nature. He then keeps on admiring the beauty and the presence of the fish in the water. He gives visual imagery of how it lives in its natural habitat. The second part is about his reminiscence of childhood, why he visited the lag 
frequently and his experience of the three fish he and his friends grave at home. That experience gave him the lesson that the strong ones survive in the world, whereas the weaker ones must succumb to their fate of being eaten by the healthy one. The third part discusses his respect and fear for the fish, whose eyes and malevolent green still haunting him at night. The poem gives us a reference to D. H. Lawrence's poem Mosquito. The mosquito does its work it is created for. It makes man dread though very small in size. The contrast here is that mosquito disgust, whereas Pike depicts his admiration. Pike is a poem of 40 lines, which consists of 10 stanzas written in quatrains. The poem can be divided into three parts. Part 1, the poet's admiration and description of the pike. Part 2, poet's experience with pikes. Part 3, poet's fishing experience in the pond. Structure of pike. The poem is written in 44 lines divided into 11 quatrains. It doesn't follow any particular form or rhyme scheme. The first letter of all the lines are cap capitalized purposefully. To give the magnificent appeal to the pike, in spite of the lines ending in the middle in many places. Themes in pike, beauty and brutality of nature. Reminiscence of childhood and inborn instincts are the major themes present in the poem Pike. Pike is beautiful by nature and at the same time it is mean to kill for its survival, which is the brutal fate of it, from growing the pikes in a, gla in a glass, jar and the dreadful experience of seeing a pike killing another, gives an overview of the poet's experiences with pike and the impact of it. The inborn killer instinct of the pike is an implication on the natural human instincts that comes with every individual even if they do not ask for it. So that's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for being with me. See you next week with new lesson. Bye bye.